Want to learn tips on being persistent with your writing and having resilience in the publishing process? Then this is the episode for you. Hi, my name is Tanya Duncan Ellis. I'm a children's author and host of Write This, the author interview show. And today I'm excited to welcome Laura Stegman, a children's author, to talk about her journey to publication and ways that she stayed resilient during the publishing process. She had a long journey, but she's making her dreams come true, and I am excited to have her on and pick her brain and find out things that she used to stay strong or ways that she kept herself motivated through the grueling, sometimes grueling publishing process. And I don't know whether she's here. I want to welcome all of you guys for joining. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And I'm going to send Laura an invite to join us here. So let's see if I can get her on. Really exciting today. Because she, I've read, read some articles that she wrote about her journey and she's had quite a few ups and downs. Hey, how you doing, Laura? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so excited that you could join us today. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Oh, of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just going to adjust my sound a little bit. Um, okay. Just give me one. I've got oh, there. my neighbor. We're live here today. My neighbor's having their line mode. So I hope that noise, you're not hearing that on your end. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, thank you. I, I, uh, I've been looking forward to this. So, uh, okay, great. Well, I'm so glad to have you, Laura. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you located and what type of books do you write? Sure. Um, I'm in Los Angeles and I write books for middle graders. Um, I have three books that are out. <laughs> this one just came out. Well, the first one, Summer of Luck. Second one is Ready or Not. And the third one is The Chambered Nautilus. And I'll go into those in a, in a bit, but um, they're part of a, a middle grade series from Young Dragons Press. And um, uh, yeah, that's that middle grade writing for middle graders is and always has been my heart. So uh, I, I feel very, very lucky that I, I was able to find a publisher who felt about the, uh, my books the way I did. And uh, and now anybody all over the world can read them. Now, what are they about? Can you give us a brief summary of the storylines? Yes. Um, summer. Of, well, they all take place at a summer camp, and they're 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 fantasy, uh, but they're they're based in the re the real world. Um, so the first book, Summer of Luck, is um, uh, about three. It's they're all about three kids: Darby, Justin, and Naz. And in the first book, they're ten, eleven, and twelve. And they are all struggling with communication. Darby stutters, mm -hmm. and um, Naz, he's from Morocco, and he speaks French and Arabic, but he's just learning English. And Justin is grieving his father, who passed away shortly before the book starts. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he is, is so deep in grief that he just shut down, and he doesn't speak at all. Mm -hmm. So they meet at this summer camp because they all hear this funny magic music, which is from a calliope, which is the kind of music that you hear on a carousel. And um, they, uh, all of a sudden, once they hear that music, they can hear each other's thoughts and they can communicate that way. So that's that's sort of the, the, the basis of the first book. And they, uh, they're at summer camp, as I said, right next to their summer camp is an abandoned warehouse. And they know that the music is coming from there, so they decide to sneak over there and find out what the heck's going on because it's not exactly normal <laughs> to hear music that can make you hear each other's thoughts. Um, and they, they feel very drawn to it, and they, um, they go in, it's all dark, but all of a sudden it turns into this magical carnival. And they meet the owner of the building, the late owner, who is a ghost, but he's a very friendly ghost, and his name is Leroy Usher, Carnival King. So that's what the L-U-C-K stands for, Leroy Usher, Carnival King. Now, Mr. Usher um, tells the kids that he will help them find their voices. In return, he needs their help to reconcile his adult children and uh, make the carnival real life 
again and have it become part of the summer camp. So that's the plot of Summer of Luck. And um, uh, that sounds really that, interesting. Yeah, that sounds like a fun story. Kind of spooky, I'm thinking, <laughs> but very interesting. Yeah, well, as I say, he's a friendly ghost and they know they, I mean, it's part of the story that they can trust him. It's not always a good idea to go sneaking off from summer camp in the middle of the night. But in any case, um, and then the second book is the next summer. So they're all a year older. That one's called Ready or Not. And it's about more, more about Justin. Justin is the main character in this book, although the other two are there and their friendship, their, their deep friendship by this point um, is, is very solid. And they, and this summer, Justin has a bully in his cabin, and it's a kid who's bigoted and who is very um, troublesome to Justin, and Justin is a little afraid to confront him because he had faced a bully when he was at home, and the bully slugged him and, you know, knocked him down, and he hasn't quite recovered from that. So um, the story of this book is, again, with Mr. Usher, who takes these kids on some time travels so that they so justin can see that mr usher himself faced bigotry in his own life and how he dealt with it and mr usher doesn't tell the kids what to do but he helps them see what he did and by the end of the book justin is able to confront this kid and and get some grown-ups to help him and um i i this book is is uh a little bit different in tone than than the first one, but it does have those fantasy elements um, of time travel and that sort of thing. So well, it sounds like well, let's switch gears a little bit because we want to focus on resiliency and publishing. So the um, storylines sound very um, applicable to what children are going through, and also with the fantasy elements, I can imagine middle graders loving those stories. So those are things that are very appealing. But something that was fun, interesting to me, I was thinking, you didn't have, the book is called Summer of Luck, but the luck wasn't coming with the first publication journey initially. So can you talk a little bit about what um, that process was like? Yes, well, well I, um, I, I didn't know I wanted to be a, a fiction writer. You know, I, I, my career uh, as an adult has been public relations. I'm a public relations consultant. But a couple decades ago, I got this, I, I was doing some writing in, in that work, uh, not fiction, but, you know, I, I write pitch letters and, and uh, uh, press releases and all that sort of thing. And I, I got this idea that I wanted to write a book for kids that would help kids today uh, face some of the difficulties that I remember facing when I was a kid. And, and I read a lot of books then, and those books helped me a lot. So that was kind of what I decided to do. Well, I didn't know anything about writing fiction. So it took me a long time, first of all, to, I wrote, I, I wrote, a, I wrote Summer of Luck pretty quick. Well, I mean, you know, over time, but, but I tried, querying it. I didn't really know anything about the publishing industry. So I spent many, many years after that learning how to write fiction for kids and reading contemporary middle grade and getting a sense of what I needed and meeting other writers and getting critique partners and feedback, revision after revision after revision. But I, I really believed in these three kids and I believed in this story and I, I wouldn't give up even when people said, well, you know, maybe you should write something else. And I was just like, I, I want, want to write this. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I, I want this to, to be published, this book. So I kept working to make it better. And that involved working with a development editor, you know, as I said, getting critique partners, revising, revising, revising. And, and um, finally, in uh, 2019, um, so we're talking really a couple of decades from when I started. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I am resilient. <laughs> I am. I am. Pers I persevere. Um, so um, I, I had queried, and I never did end up getting an agent. 
but I I had gotten really hooked in with other write other middle grade writers and I knew that there were publishers that you could go to directly so that's what I did so I went to a small publisher and again I you know read some rejections but one day I I looked at my phone and, oh here's a here's an email from a publisher probably another rejection but it wasn't it was an acceptance Wow. And they were excited about my my book, and they knew that it was I because I I said it had serious potential. I hadn't I think I had started writing Ready or Not by then, but um, they gave me a three a three year sorry a three book deal. Wow! And it was you know yeah it was like a a real dream come true, and and then it was kind of a dream that went off the rails a little bit because um summer of luck well they published summer of luck in 2020 first of all it was the pandemic and what and, was the publisher who was this publisher well this publisher went out of business oh, so okay yeah. so that's that's what my next uh oh. <laughs> part of the story is that almost a year later they went out of business and so i was you know one book I mean normally in that kind of situation the book dies the series dies because nobody's going to republish but I was very very fortunate to find some uh, my my publisher who went out of business hooked me up with with um connected me with with someone who knew about Young Dragons Press which is my current publisher and mm -hmm. they were looking for series and they read Summer of Luck, and they loved it, and they gave me a three-book deal, which involved publishing Summer of whoops, Summer of Luck uh, with a new cover and a new edition. This is the second edition. And since then, that was in 2022, and they released uh, Ready or Not in 2023 and uh, The Chambered Nautilus uh about three weeks ago oh congratulations that's wonderful now let me ask you this during the time when you were revising summer of luck and going through all the rejections and everything how did you keep yourself motivated to continue that that's a really good question because i think that that was part of my my uh uh thing that i love to share with other writers i i I do a lot of um, sort of spiritual work, I guess you could call it. And um, so one of the things that I did was I made a list of affirmations and it has 31 affirmations on it. So there's one for every day. And I would write down things. I, when I made the list, I would write down things that I had heard or that I believed in. Like, for example, there was a woman on uh, Twitter who posted a tweet she was older and um she she said that and she had just gotten her first book published and she said there's no age limit to my dreams and so that was i put that on the list and then you know i came up with all these different things or or this was around the time that uh lady gaga won an Os oscar and she talked about persevering so i wrote down her you know a, a line from her acceptance speech and i and and so every day i would read one of those things over years and this this kept me going because another one was this can happen to me and you know and and if uh you know failure failing at something doesn't mean i'm a failure you know those kinds of things and i looked for those and i sought them and i made them part of my daily routine because without them it's easy to get discouraged and the other thing is I just kept writing you know I started ready or not this was before I even had my first publishing deal by the time I I, I finished it was when I signed with Young Dragons Press and so I had two books already you know and I was in the middle of the third and the other the other thing that that you know, if we want to flash forward a little bit, I mean, I may, you know, I know I value and I'm so grateful for my my success in having three books published. But I wrote a fourth book, not 
part of this series, but uh, another another middle grade, a contemporary. And um, that book is really, really close to my heart, and I love it, and I believe in it. And I wanted to, uh, I want to query agents because perhaps I can find a way to have a a, a bigger publisher, mm -hmm. and um, you know, someone that will help me get the the book seen a little more. Young Dragons Press is wonderful, and I love them. Um, but I'm doing a lot of the the marketing of pretty much almost all of it. So, um, but I, um, you know, so I've had rejections again, and I'm going through the same thing. And even though I have three books published, you know, sometimes I I despair. Like, well, am I ever going to get any interest in this fourth book? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I believe I will. So I keep going, and I'm I'm revise. I'm doing a revision of it right now. I again work with other writers. I I read, you know, I I read social media a lot to be to get encouraged, not discouraged, because I'm very careful about who I follow and and you know, and and leave a lot of things out of my feed. And I I continually work. What can I do to get better? You know, what can I do to make this chapter sing more? You know, and and I stopped querying because I knew it wasn't the right time. It's so easy to get impatient, but again, if I if I remind myself this can happen to me and you know, failure a, a failure isn't failing isn't, you know, I'm not a failure. It's just a lot of those kinds of affirmations and and making sure that I I I have a, and my eye on my my heart which is which is what i write in my middle grade books and i really want all three of them that are published and this fourth one they all they all cover topics and things that that a lot of kids struggle with and i and i just know that from when i was a kid and even now when i read middle grade books which i do a lot there there's so much in there to inspire kids and make them understand they're not alone that there's a solution for them that that Whatever they're struggling with, there is someone they can go to for help, and and they are not they are not the only ones who struggle with you know whatever it is. Well, it sounds like you know for you because you love what you're doing that kind of helps keep you going as well because you believe truly believe in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I mean, you know, I I loved my work as a publicist. Um, I until I didn't anymore, you know, and I was ready to just sort of. I mean, and I had already started writing my books, but once I was able to devote my full time to writing and and all this work that I do to p publicize and market my work, um, I'm this is the happiest I've ever been, and um, <laughs> I. I don't know how to explain that exactly because it's not like I am at the point where I'm making a living from this, but um, you know, I mean, to spend my days working on on letting people know about my book and my evenings writing more, that's to me that's heaven. I love it. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that's very encouraging and. It's, it's enlightening for some because some people may think if you get a book deal or get your books published, you've kind of arrived, but it's kind of like a never ending. I guess if you're on the level of Stephen King or something, it may be different, but for like a mid list or new author, you still have to continue to sell your work and get it. It's kind of like starting over again. I guess uh, yeah, I mean, the, the other thing, I, I, I know I mentioned, you know, connecting with other writers, but one of the, the things that's also been extremely helpful is, is, is forming, um, you know, groups of writers. I have one group that I, that I started, which um, is called the Mighty Middle Grade Writers, and we're all traditionally published, and we, um, you know, we, we support each other, and we, we work together, but we also sometimes just gripe together. Sometimes we write together, you know. And and I have I also have a critique group that is essential for me. I've had critique partners too, individual. I mean, just having other writers to 
to connect with is is so good for for my my soul but it's also good to, because i see what other what every writer goes through my group and my critique group have probably every every type of writer i mean they're all middle grade but but their publishing journeys are all different and some of them have you know uh been very successful and sold lots of books and some of them have been successful but they they they're still you know having to pitch their fourth book because their editor didn't like the third book or you know what i mean so i don't i i try not to compare myself to anybody i only can compare myself to myself and um i have to also continually remind myself you know three books that's pretty good and instead of d discounting it because it's already done and seeking something new you know i mean i i seek something new i continually seek something new but i have to remind myself you know good job i have to give myself a pat on the back and i think that's also why i um you know i can persevere i can continually face rejection you know and um it's it's because because i i just have my eye on what makes me happy you know writing makes me happy reading makes me happy things things that i do um are are bring me joy in my life and if i if i constantly have my eye on well what if i could have that then I'm, you know, it, it dampens the, the present. I try to stay in the present. I mean, I think that's probably one of the most important parts of persevering as well. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you've given three key tips to resilience, and that is having positive affirmations, getting in community, and also, what was it last now? my mind's going so positive affirmations getting in that community and being grateful for all that you've accomplished has helped you kind of weather through all the ups and downs yeah that's that's a good a good summary yeah, yeah. so that's yeah those are great tips because it is hard you know there's so many highs and lows in the publishing journey and a lot of times on social media we share all of our wins but there's so many struggles along the way so it's it's a lot in this business and you got to really be mentally tough and strong to yeah continue. i mean it's I, I when i was querying last um december and i was getting nothing but no's i i struck it's you know the other thing is it's not like i don't struggle because i struggled and i was feeling really down and i had to sort of redouble my my um that sort of self care so that i didn't stay in that place mm -hmm. and one of the things that i i didn't discover this exactly but i got reminded of it it's okay to feel bad like feeling bad about something isn't the end of the world in fact i have to acknowledge my feelings if i try to stuff them or get rid of them some way you know i i don't um i'm not gonna get past it but if i if i sit with it and know that it's gonna pass and use my my tools that i that i use you know to connect with someone else talk about it say how i feel you know ask someone else have you ever been through this Mm -hmm. yeah of course and hear what they and then all of a sudden it's not so bad like giving voice to my feelings is really what summer of luck is all about and um so i i writing that book i learned a lot oh yeah that's true because then they're all finding their voice in the same way so that sounds cool Okay, well, I really enjoyed this conversation, Lauren. You've given me a lot of food for thought and things to think about when I feel discouraged or feel stressed. So these Thank were you. some great tips. Thanks for sharing that. Thank now, you how, so much. 
Now, what books are you working on? Any other projects? And tell us where people can reach you and, and buy your books. Um, yeah, my website is laurastegman.com. So you can find me there. And all my books are listed there. They're available wherever books are sold. Um, and uh, I'm on Twitter at Laura, at, at Laura Stegman and on Instagram at Laura underscore Stegman. And um, yeah, uh, but if you want to learn more about my three books, check out laurastegman.com. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank you again for joining me, Laura, and thank you everyone for tuning in. And we'll see you next week for another episode of Write This. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tanya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.